But you know what I do love, Bobby? Um... Love and affection, friendship... Um... The fall of the British Empire? I love all of those things, but you know what I love more than that? Cutting meat? I'll save you the trouble. I love welcoming back our recurring listeners to the Frying Pan Podcast. Introducing Ooh. myself, Daniel Wet Wipe Seer, and introducing my co-host and best friend, Wait, that's me! It's you! Robert Banana Chips D'Onofrio, how's it going, man? I'm doing swell. Great to have you on the show. Uh, Bobby, our most recurring guest possible. Um, <laughs> love to have him around. Bobby, how are you doing today? Um, you know, I'm doing well. I had an early start today. As you may know, I am still on spring break. It feels like I'm always on break for some reason, whether it's like the surgery or... You know, winter break or spring. Yeah, I'm. Oh, I'm always on break. I'm not really complaining, but you know, I'm on break. You're just a busy man. Yeah. So it's it's Tuesday, as you know. I saw. Uh, actually, I went out of town today to see my uh, other grandmother, my Grammy, as I call her, and it was um, actually really nice. Yeah, uh, I haven't seen her since Christmas. We had a nice chat for a few hours with uh, her and my dad. Had some good uh, food. She made this glorious pot roast. Nice. I felt like I almost got pulled over today, which was kind of frightening. Oh, yeah? What happened? Give me the scoop. So, I'm getting onto the highway, and I can just see, like, a line of tractor trailers coming. And I'm like, oh, no. Oh, no. And you know, like, when you're getting onto the highway, you're, like, not fast enough at the moment to keep up with people that are in, like, the passing lane of the travel lane. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, you're, like fast enough to where you can't tell if you're going to be in front or behind the people that you're like merging into. Yeah, you're cruising but not not quick enough. Exactly. So like I sped up to get in front of the tractor trailers because they were like forming a line for some reason. There was a tractor trailer in the passing lane. That's a no-no in our, in our area if you didn't know. Anyways, so I speed up. I get up to about like 75 in order to go from the far right to the left, in order to, you know, weave my way around these tractor trailers just so I don't get kind of cucked, because I had to take an exit relatively soon. Or not an exit, I'm sorry, like a highway change type dealio. An off ramp. Not an off ramp. Uh, Doesn't matter. Whatever. Continue. Doesn't matter. So I speed up, and as I get into the left lane, I see I'm going about 73 now because, you know, I initially slowed down the moment I got into, you know, the lane that I want to be because, you know, speeding's bad. Don't do it, folks. But I was still technically going above the speed limit. So you know how there's the median between the two sides of the highway where the cops can sit in between? Yeah, yeah. There was two of them, and I passed them going about 73. And the moment I passed them... They both flick their lights on and launch out into the highway, the side I'm on. And I'm thinking, I'm screwed, I'm screwed. It's one of those cops that's going to be mean to me because I was going 73. I get it, 65. I should have been going 65. I'm so I'm like Fuck thinking that. to myself, like, I'm done zone. I'm done. I'm getting a ticket. My insurance is going up. My parents are going to hate me. I'm a degenerate. Lo and behold, they just pulled over the tractor trailer that was behind me for being in the passenger lane or the passing lane. That's so, fitting. yeah, I did have a, almost have a, I did almost have a minor heart attack. Like I, I shit you not, like my heart dropped. I'm like, I'm getting a ticket in the first year of having my license for going 73 and a 65. I, I've done. That's what happened to me. I went 38 and a 30, and I got a 200 dollars ticket for it. Jeez, man, that's brutal. Well, they, they got to meet their quotas, I understand. Well, n n n no. 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 <laughs> no. Yeah. That's just being an ass, at yeah. least in my opinion. But I do respect cops, they keep us safe. Yeah. That was, that, that was my day, that was my day. How was yours? Tell me about it. Oh, you know, it's good, nice Tuesday, woke up, headache, went to work, headache, had a headache the whole day. It was just a big headache. But that's okay, because mm. life is great. Um, spring is around the corner. I can feel it in the air. I can see it in the weather forecast. I'm seeing like si almost 60 on Friday and Saturday. And at the Sounds end of the good. day, that's all that really matters to me. 
Oh yeah, any plans for this weekend? Um, don't know yet. I'll let you know when Actually, I get there. I heard you had a pretty good weekend. Speaking of, how, oh, how was your weekend? Oh, oh, that's probably why I still have a headache. Um, <laughs> went to went to a Travis Scott concert. Um, I imagine everybody knows Travis Scott rapper. Um, I'm sorry, who? Uh, Travis Scott. He makes he he makes music. Ah, Travester Scottimus. Yes, 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 yes. That hurt. That really hurt to hear. I'd prefer to didn't <laughs> say that again. Um, or it, maybe you know him as Kylie Jenner's boyfriend, which would be a pretty shitty title. Not a shitty title, but uh, I'd like to be known for music more. But went that'd to be a little the, bit of a feels bad man. Yeah, went to the concert. Uh, at first, I was trying to like downplay it to myself. I'm like, oh, it's not gonna be that good. Like, I hear the concert's already always hyped up. But, eh, it's not gonna be that good. And honestly, mind blowing once in a lifetime experience. Probably oh, ruined yeah. every other concert I go to. <laughs> yeah. What was so? Tell me about the hype moments. Like, what were you feeling? Okay. Well, it's gonna start off. We had we had Sheck West opening for Travis Scott. Sheck West, he's that's, doing his thing. He's sing. He's, that's he's the Obama guy. Well, exactly. He's singing his songs. He's he's having a good time. Qu- to be quite honest. Nobody fucking cares, but his his last song before he leaves is Mobamba, and it's as if everyone filed out of the arena and then filed back in for Mobamba, because everybody was popping off. And um, <laughs> there's one part in that song where he goes, "Oh fuck shit, bitch," in that order. And um, let me tell you, everybody was popping off. Oh yeah. We Did jumping. you like feel the floor shaking with people like jumping and stuff? Dude, my. My right ear, I can't hear that well out of. It felt like somebody was stabbing my right ear the whole time, but it Mm. wasn't, like, painful. It was just, like, alarming. You know, that's true. They say even if you do go to concerts a decent bit, you should still wear earplugs because it doesn't actually ruin the quality of the sound. Hell yeah, it does. Well, that's just what they say. You know, ears are one of those things where people tend to neglect. Like, obviously people know to take care of your teeth and whatnot and your eyes, but... You gotta watch out for your ears, man. Watch out for the ears, or listen to them. See, what, see what I see what I like because you hear from you. Just continue. You, Tell me about okay. Travis Scott. Um, Travis Scott comes out, opens up a stargaze, and everyone's popping off. We're running through all the songs. I'm living my life. I got a lot of videos of it that I like to um that I'm probably gonna go back and watch every night for the next couple weeks because it was so much fun. I was uh. Yeah. Made some friends with the people that That's good. that stood next to us. May have consumed some things to get me to that level, if you know what I mean. Um, he means carrots. Carrots, yes. They brought a bag of carrots, and I was like, ooh, don't mind if I do. I love baby carrots. Could you imagine that, though, realistically, if you look to your left and you just see a guy with a bag of baby carrots at a Travis Scott concert? If he had, like, a cup of ranch, it'd be like, all right, this guy, this guy gets it. This guy's got <laughs> life figured out. No, nah, he's uh, just eating them raw, unwashed. That's what I... I don't eat them when unwashed, but I'll just, like... I always buy the bag of baby carrots, and I'm just like... Mm, num, 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 give me them. Mm, um, so we're, we're, winding, we're winding down through the night. He's in, like... Because it's Astro World, so he's got, like... He's got, a, like, a Ferris wheel set up where... I guess it was a raffle if you had VIP tickets. You could go on it, and it, like, went in circles. And then there was another one where it was, like, a roller coaster above that uh he got on and then fans got on it too uh it was fucking Um, nuts that sounds fucking wild (laughs) we were popping through all the bangers we had we had goosebump um 4 a.m uh everything from i haven't heard that song in a while oh i popped off when the drop hit for that oh i went in but uh, come on all all of us want to know how was sicko mode oh my all right so he S- sicko mode was the closer and we're everyone we're jumping around we're all having a great time and then um it's like he's he went on at like 9 15 and it's like 10 30 at this point um mm-hmm. he he's starting to like slow it down he's playing some slower songs we're all we're all vibing we're having a great time and then he's like are you all ready to go sicko mode and then the beat bumps in in the fucking mosh pit in the middle oh my god you could see the punches coming in left and right Oh man. Uh Dan was in there axe kicking people. No, I dude, I wish I was in the mosh pit. That would have been so much fun. But I guess like before all right, the best part is 
Um, when Shaq West was out there, the mosh pit was... They were electric. And, like, I think a couple people actually got knocked out, because I saw, like, five people get escorted out. And I'm thinking to myself, how are you going to get escorted out for Shaq West and miss Travis Scott? Like, the whole reason you'd go to the concert. <laughs> hey, now. Hey, now. Can't hey, now me. But, um... Don't hate on the Obama guy. I... I, well, the fact that you're referring to him as the Mobama guy is a little uh, disrespectful. I'm gonna say it. He has other tracks, such as Gmail. Well, you know what? All I care about is that he's got hoes calling on his phone. He does. But, um, so Sicko Mode. Sicko Mode comes out. Every phone comes out. Everyone's trapping. We're living our best life. Um, and then it gets to the second part where the, like, Drake's verse. Mm. I love who I am. And then when it gets to the out like a light, oh. Every whatever little energy everyone had left went out the window with that. People were <laughs> screaming. Oh my god! I would do anything to go to a Travis Scott concert again. Huh? Well, actually, we could if you want to. Um, I think there's oh, still yeah. there's still Sunday tickets for Boston Calling, but they're like 105 bucks each. So when's that? Um, May, June. I think it's May, like May 26th. Actually, maybe. Have to see how people think. But yeah. Yeah, let's, let's talk to the boys. We can make it an outing. Yeah. I don't know if anybody wants to pay 105 for a ticket, though. No, that's true. Well, we'll see. We'll see. All I know, hands down, one of the best experiences of my life. I'm happy for you. Thank it's you. great, man. I, I'm glad you went. <laughs> yeah. Um. Sounds like a pretty hype weekend. Yeah, it's about as hype as it gets for me. Pretty, you know, I like to... Take it easy. Go with the flow. Our, our usual calm, cool, and collected Dan was just flexing nonstop for oh, the rest I was, of the weekend. I was flexing. I felt bad because I kept bumping into the people next to me, but they were doing the same too. So we had a we had a little mutual agreement that if we bump into each other, it's okay as long as we don't yeah, spill like, anything. Like, hey, don't elbow me in the face. <laughs> I won't elbow you in the face. Oh, I, dude, I was what was it? I almost elbowed Sylvie. I went. Sylvie's person I went with. Um, almost elbowed her in the head, but I just missed because she's too short, so that's good. <laughs> oh, could you imagine if you like, accidentally just knocked out the person right next to you? Like, do you just continue to bump, or do you... Yeah! Like, I, yeah. I, if she doesn't... All right, like, right if 20 minutes goes by and she doesn't wake up, then I'm like, okay, stop faking well, it. <laughs> and if then, someone <laughs> doesn't wake up after 20 minutes, that's brain damage. Yeah, that's like, eh. Win some, you lose some. Yeah, <laughs> that's that's like a pro boxer right there. Yeah. Bottom line. Speaking of, did you hear Mayweather uh, was uh, put in cuffs recently? Not Mayweather. I'm sorry, McGregor. Yeah, he's been in it's cuffs. Not, he just. It's not a topic we're talking about, but just just recently, I guess on a, like they called it theft, but in reality, some guy was I guess like kind of fucking fucking with him, and he just took his phone, stomped into the ground. And yeah. Well, he got released phone, still. He got released last night. I guess the first thing he did was just went for a run. Um, first, first on the chopping block. Um, this is this is a little two. Block. This is a little two parter. Uh, Papa John he finally steps down after his his Papa John controversy of just casually saying the N word, as you do, right? Uh, uh, so he he's finally I'm... gone, and now Mario Batali gave up all his restaurants after his uh me too scandal that happened almost like i think a little over a year ago Jeez. so basically you know oh sorry you go no i just want to say the papa john's thing i did not know that was a real person yeah <laughs> like they're like spokes guy like i thought he was purely just the spokes guy i didn't know he was like the ceo or whatever yeah why do you think he's always during the super bowl he'd always be like uh getting all lovey-dovey with peyton manning they don't just let anyone okay. love up to Peyton Manning. Let's 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 be real here. Like, is like Ronald McDonald the CEO of McDonald's? Oh, actually, funny you mention that because I guess the person that was Ronald McDonald passed away yesterday. Oh, that's unfortunate. Rest in peace. Rest, I guess I don't know who the fuck it was, but um, regardless, yeah, Papa John's is real, real guy. Jeez, well, he's a real bad guy because, you know, explicit. Yeah. I mean, it's it's not something you casually just say in conversation. Yeah, he said it during a conference, if I like a conference call or yeah, something like that. Yeah, that's the part that throws 
That that throws me off a little bit because I'm wondering who you're talking to in a conference call where that's like you know, yeah, acceptable. Like, that's a that's a professional <laughs> environment, you know. Like yeah. I'm sure, like you know, closet racists and even like just people that are rather uh, liberal with their language, like they they would know that like in a business environment, most swears are not appropriate, let alone the n-word. Yeah. Um, not a good. It's just in- bizarre to me. Not a, not a word you really throw out in an in an interview either. Uh, uh, believe it or not, no, yeah, no. no it's it's, it it's, a, it's like a common misconception. Some people think it's like a term of endearment. Um, majority uh, are not stupid and don't say it. Hopefully, but so, Mar- in Mario Batali's case, he was accused of sexual assault and rape because who. Who's famous? Or sorry, who's famous? In a doesn't have an allegation like that these days. Uh, hopefully not many. Yeah, well, it feels like it feels like a lot. It's terrifying, but um, I know. so he gave up all the rights to his restaurant, so he's making no income from it. Uh, a bunch of <laughs> I was reading the article that came with it, and it's literally just like a bunch of Italian last names <laughs> that uh <laughs> bought it, and it's like okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, it, it's uh, it sucks because that kind of plays into the whole like the restaurant business sucks. It's it's one of the most corrupt in- industries that people don't even think about. Yeah, no, I agree. But, uh, good, just, good, it's, good thing that the the Batali guy stepped down. Fucking scumbag. Yeah, no, I don't. It, he had to give up a lot too, man. Like he had a decent few restaurants. Yeah, he was probably one of the biggest names when it comes to the restaurant industry and uh come on, come on men stop letting power go to your head you can't just do anything because you got money no just th- no here's the thing you just throw everything away yeah 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 like w- once you're like oh wow i finally made it to the top just do something really stupid wait like eh, you know five years for it to come to light and then you're like, oh, well, I guess I made all my money. I don't have to worry about uh, taking care of anything anymore. Jeez. That's what I'm guessing the plan is. That's what I'm thinking people are thinking. You know what I'm thinking? I'm hoping. To, I hope that's not like a premeditated thing. <laughs> I would imagine it's not, but like it's still just a reoccurring. It's a, a worrying trend, some may say. Yeah. Uh, I think moral of the story, uh, don't do stupid stuff. Because they'll come to yeah. light when you're famous. <laughs> Yeah, just like, uh, just, well, or you can do stupid stuff while you're famous and then try and act like you didn't do stupid stuff while you were famous, like R. Kelly. Oh, God. Did you, have you, did you, um, did you watch that interview at all? I watched clips, like, a, like, um, like the subtitled picture clips things, you know what I'm talking about, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, it's like, yeah, a, I, I was, it's like a, he's a, really he's a fucking whack job. Yeah, it's like a really big five year old getting a platform. Well, I guess maybe he still thinks he is five mentally, because, you know. Okay, so for the people that don't know, this is taken directly from the article written by uh, Elizabeth Harris. It goes, R. Kelly stood above her in his gray suit, screaming. He jumped out of his chair and pounded his chest, yelling into the camera. Gail King sat in front of him, just inches away, emanating nothing but calm. Shout out to Gail King, because during that interview, she was very calm, cool, and collected. I, was, I mean, I don't know how else you could have reacted in that scenario, except for, like, getting up and yeah. walking away. But I think she, uh, later in the article, a quote from her was like, um, I couldn't get up, because if I did, that would signify that the interview was over. Mm-hmm. But um, if you've been living under a rock, the whole R. Kelly thing is... Uh, I, he's been, like, brainwashing minors in, like, having multiple girlfriends and, like underage sex it's just like it's so fucking weird i guess like one of the victims of like this thing she goes like i think her name is clary yeah the quote there's a tweet from cbs this morning and she and it's a quote from her it says when i was 17 my parents were actually making me trying to get me to take photos with him take sexual videos with him and all kinds of stuff it's um well, there was also the thing a while ago when he was uh, married, allegedly, to a girl named Aaliyah when she was 15. 
But he denies ever having sex with an underage woman. Uh, uh, it's, yeah, uh, that's kind of, yeah, that's the vibe. Like, the whole, like, situation in itself is just rather messed up in itself. Because, okay, so not only is he, you know, cahootling with underage women and girls. <laughs> right, you just but, say fucking cahootling? <laughs> man, I just don't want to say sex on underage girls in the same sentence. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> He's playing cahoot with underage women. It's like, R. Okay, Kelly. Okay, now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay. But, uh, no, like, like, <laughs> <sorry>. it's like. <laughs> <laughs> you could have said anything else, he's <laughs> <just> fucking cahootling. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. Keep going. Keep going. Alright, uh, lost my train of thought here. No, okay. Oh, uh, you're, so, on, you're like, on cahootling? <laughs> so, it seems like. It's not like he was just a predator. It seems like on the girls end like the parents played into it as well with at least one of them and then there was also r kelly i uh i don't have it in front of me so i could be quoting wrong but he said like parents sold their daughters to him which kind of like admits that he purchased an underage girl in a really roundabout way but i'm sure like he was just worded messed up the whole situation's just bizarre enough. Well, obviously, shouldn't be a thing. Yeah, it's just fucked. The whole thing's just fucked. Oh yeah, uh, beyond. Yeah, that's. It's not something I wanted to dive into. It's just something that uh, it's been pretty, pretty apparent lately that we've been kind of ignoring. You know, let's let, let's let's talk about something more upbeat, okay? Hit me with it. So, guess who's back, baby? It's the Jonas Brothers. I almost get, I almost did like the big time rush with the whoa, uh, uh, oh. <laughs> not the same. No, boy bands though. Jonas Brothers so are back, baby. Jonas Brothers are back. They released a new song called "Sucker." It's a pretty and, good song. Um, yeah, the video is really good. It shows their three uh, significant others in it. Mm -hmm. Nick, John, uh, Nick's, Kevin's, and Joe's. Which is, uh, if you didn't know, Joe is. Joe's fiance, Joe Jonas's fiance, is Sophie Turner, who is one of the leading cast members in Game of Thrones, which is cool. Hmm. Also, I'm, I'm very interested in how they got together. Eh, famous people, well, famous attractive people attract other famous attractive people. It's just kind of a cycle. Hmm, but they're cute. Sure. I like them together. Oh, I do as well. I, I think they they look they all three of them look good with their significant others. Yeah, um, Kevin Jonas. Came out of the shadows, came out of the woodworks. He's like, you know what? Fuck it, we back. Yeah, you know, Kevin. So you you actually told me this the other day. Kevin Jonas, like, he's he's been a realtor this time since the band's broken up. Yeah, I don't know if he still is, but I remember, like, the whole thing was, like, after the band broke up and, like, everyone was kind of, like, getting their feet, their footing, uh, mm. Nick and Joe were just like, no, nah, we're going to stick with the music. And Kevin's like, I want to go sell houses. Like, exactly. Right, Could bro. you imagine if, like, Kevin Jonas is your realtor? That'd be great. Like, I've said this before, but, like, how would you react? I, I would be looking, I'm like, hey, 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 do the, do, 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 do the, the 3,000. Do, yeah, do the thing. Do 3,000. Do, <laughs> do, do the, like, do, do SOS. <laughs> do SOS, yeah. Oh. But, um, yeah, so... There, um, so Love Bug came out and uh, it's hit the number one Billboard spot, I think, in the Hot 100. It was number or one. Sucker, sorry, did. I think so. No way. So, looking at the article, has achieved their inaugural number one hit on the Billboard Hot 100. Yeah, Sucker, topping it. Their previous was uh. I know Year 3000 Love Bug never went to number one. I think Burning Up was their highest, according to the article, which was at number five. Oh, Burning Up was a banger. Oh, it definitely was. It definitely was. But uh, in in their like little comeback thing, they had something going on with James Gordon, where he does the uh, carpool karaoke, if you remember. Mm -hmm. I find it interesting. Um, he hooked them up to a lie detector, actually, during the carpool karaoke. He just a a asked them some exposing questions, and... Apparently, Nick Jonas admits to breaking up the band. He didn't say why, but we do know that 
Nick was the reason. I'm okay with it. You know, if yeah, they, how, I, how, I, how, sorry, I can't tell. I don't know if they're like actually are they actually making a comeback or was it just like a little one and done thing? I mean, I hope it's I hope it's like a like not a one and done thing. Yeah, I'm fully I around. Think the, I think the world needs more Jonas Brothers around it because we would just be a happier place overall. I agree. Now, what do you, what do you think Nick said to make the band break up? What do you think his intentions mm. were? You know, because they are brothers, and I do have a brother, I imagine it started as some petty squabble that escalated. I th- That's what I would think if I look at my relationship with my own brother. Yeah, I could see that. But, you know, it also could be a thing where, like, he says he was break, like, he broke up the band because he admitted it in the carpool karaoke, but it could have been more of like a, uh, like a, like, a, hey, I'm looking to go in this direction, and I'm not sure if you guys are on board type of deal. You know, it, it could be like that. Like, it, you know, it doesn't mean that he broke up the band. It could just be like that he was the leading advocate for going in that direction. Yeah. See, I'm surprised. I would have thought it would, I th- I would have thought it'd been Joe that uh, broke up the band. You know, for some reason, I feel the same way. Back in the day. Well, because he, kind of, he was kind of the lead. He was kind of the front man. And he was a... Uh, he was a bad boy on Camp Rock. I don't know if you remember that, but maybe that's why I thought. <laughs> yeah. Remember that movie? Yeah. Okay. Interesting. I mean, I'll tell you, dude. Um, Joe Jonas and Demi Lovato for that movie definitely glowed up. They're 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 that, they're doing good now. That's true. Did you hear that? Uh, I think I'm not sure if this is true, but I recall hearing that uh, if they did like go on tour again, that Demi Lovato would be up for joining them on tour. Oh. Bring it back, baby! <laughs> I know it's like, it's like our childhood is coming back. Dude, could you imagine if they play someone. like that? Uh, do you remember the Camp Rock song, like the the big one at the end? Yes, I do. This is I do. real. This is me. <laughs> I'm exactly you where I'm supposed, supposed to be, be now. And sign on, okay. sign on me. <laughs> Sorry. Um, no, you're good, dude. Regardless. Oh, That'd make my life actually. I, like I, I would buy tickets to that. I would buy I tickets. I don't care if I look like a total creep. <laughs> no, you'd be fine because everyone that'd go there would be the same age as us and just like, fuck yes, <laughs> I needed this. <laughs> For and real also, though, it's 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 nice in this very uh, dark and stormy time and yeah. all this uncertainty to have some nice news like this. Yeah. Well, also in the off chance that if I go, Demi Lovato sees me in the crowd and she's like, I want to marry that man, and I'm like, hey. <laughs> Sure, let's do it. She she she's doing well for herself. I hope she's uh you know doing well with her addiction as well. Yeah, she seems to have been recovering pretty well. Well, she definitely looks good. Yeah, god damn, yeah, she she look she she mm, you know she <laughs> looking good. You sound like one of those southern guys that for some reason like you understand what they're saying no, but well boy just, i like, tell you but give here. some of that no i don't know on the bayou down the bayou <laughs> oh my god that used to be one of my favorite memories is um watching uh it was like swamp people i think where it was like alligator hunting on the bayou in louisiana <laughs> i i don't know why that Watching that, um, Ice Road Truckers and um, Gold Rush on the Discovery Channel. Oh, and Deadliest Catch with my dad. I don't know why. Deadliest Catch. Yeah. It was like every Tuesday night when it would air, or it'd be like a new episode at 8 o'clock. I think my bedtime was 9. I'd watch the episode Deadliest Catch and I'd go to bed. And I'm like, oh, what a great show. But now nowadays I could not give a fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's like, yeah, we caught this monster catfish. It's like... Uh, but back then, it was like, holy fuck! Yeah, what? Well, that was like, um... I mean, it's still actually pretty impressive now, but when River Monsters was really popular, mm. and he's like, I have a stick and a shoelace, I'm gonna go catch me a Loch Ness Monster, and you're like, okay. Yeah, yeah. right. Yeah. I always love those, like, uh, I like the ones where they go to, like, the Amazon or whatever, and they those, like, huge anacondas are swimming in the lakes and shit. Yeah. You know, I find that thing, like, that thought very scary in itself, but it's cool to watch it on TV sometimes. Water snake? Top ten most terrifying. Actually, 
Water in general, terrifying to me. That's that's actually a fact right there. Yeah, especially like my greatest fear is being like stuck in the middle of the ocean. Uh, that's probably why we'll never go deep sea fishing. Yeah. Ever. That's my thing is like I like the beach, but I don't like going in the water. See, I'm the opposite. I do not like the beach because I'm not a fan of sand, but the water's pretty cool sometimes. Yeah. Well, like I'll I'll go to like get my get my little my calves wet. That's about as deep as I'll go. Yeah, I can respect that. Mostly because the thought of getting swept away scares me. That happened to me one time, almost. Really? Yeah, I got caught in the undertow, and I was just like... I think I was like eight, so I didn't know what was happening, but I was like, well, I can't fight this for some reason. So I guess I'm just dead. But <laughs> luckily the lifeguard was like, don't worry, bro, I got you. And I was like, just let me go, man. Please. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, cute kid, cute kid. No, actually, uh, believe it, um, not believe it or not, they say that if you do get cut into, caught into an undertow, you should be swimming parallel to the shore. Not towards it, parallel. Good in to order know. to escape it. If yeah, if, so, for sorry. all those listeners out there. If only you were there caught. for, if only you were there for eight-year-old me. Yeah, could you imagine me just like, swim parallel. Yeah. To the side, to the side. Not, not towards me. Parallel, parallel. <laughs> but it's like, <laughs> you, it's you now, but you're back then. So you're f like you're floating above the water, and you're like, swim towards me, Daniel. <laughs> I am the guidance. I am the way. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> That'd be terrifying. Yeah, Jonas Brothers. Let's hope they're back. I don't actually know. I, I'd be. I'm interested to find out if they are. You know, if it was a one and done, like you say, or a uh, comeback game. Yeah. Well, if they. Put out a second one, then I'd say we're pretty good. Yeah, soccer. What do you think of the actual song? By the way, I thought it was pretty good. Soccer. It was cute. It was a nice little pop song. I get down to it. I don't. Know yeah, it was. A... Sorry. No, you're good. I was just gonna say, like, I wouldn't call it like a banger, like SOS mm. or Year Three Thousand. Mm. But it, like, it had like it definitely had that Jonas Brothers feel to it. Even though, like, obviously their music styles have, you know probably changed and progressed over what was it eight years they were broken up it's, it's, oh i think 10 actually almost 10 mm. so yeah like I, I i still felt like they sounded like the Jonas brothers from it so that was it was nice it was nice yeah i i don't think i'd put it in a playlist but if it came on i would skip it mm -hmm. that's uh, i'm not a big pop guy i'm like an indie pop guy i'm complicated <laughs> Oh wow! I'm not like other boys. I, I like indie pop. <laughs> I paint my nails black and wear striped shirts. Yeah, and me the Metallica T-shirt I wear is purely aesthetic. Anything that's that loud and obnoxious, not for my eardrums. No, no, no. <laughs> All right, Jeez. let's stop. Um, <laughs> another topic: Brie Larson. She's Captain Marvel. Wait. Captain Marvel just came out. Um, Captain Marvel did just come out. I've heard very mixed reviews on it. As have I. I listened to a podcast that said they did not like it, but mm -hmm. my friend said that it was like an 8 out of 10. So I don't See, know what okay. to believe. So, like, I trust our friend Jordan when it comes to movies. He said it was a good watch. But he said it was, like, that's the thing. He said it was a good watch, right? Yeah. Like, that was the thing. Like, so from what I've heard, it's, uh, like, the, old, the people that call it bad kind of look more into like the mcu the marvel cinematic universe and whatnot and like they compare it to other past films like the first thing you have to remember this is an origin story film historically the origin story films for most of the avengers have been kind of hit or miss depending on who you know who you talk to about it you I'm know gonna, i'm gonna be honest i don't the only good i'd say origin movie from marvel that was like actually a good movie is probably black panther um uh pers all right, personally I first iron man okay yeah. hulk hey, it was pretty good for the for its time yeah for its time it was okay the hulk was bad i think we can agree on that yeah uh, it was it was pretty mediocre it was still pretty cool though watching the hulk you know not be or it was cool actually seeing the cgi hulk though oh yeah not like the shitty hulk that they had before yeah um thor i thought was kind of bad I didn't like it. Mm -hmm. Captain America was just boring. 
I thought it was a pretty good origin. I thought that yeah. that would be like one of the better ones personally. Yeah, it was a good origin, but I think the movie itself was pretty boring. Mm -hmm. Um Doctor Strange had cool visuals, but I thought that was a great origin story. I mean, even if the story was a little on the dumber side, it was still a, yeah. like a really fun watch. Yeah, I was okay with it. And no one gives a fuck about Ant-Man. Hey, oh, now. If you want to talk Sp if you want to throw Spider-Man for origin, Sp Spider-Man Homecoming, if you want to count that as an origin for this Spider-Man, I'm that's kind that. of it was. That yeah. was a great one, actually. Yeah, I like that a lot. But, but yeah, circling back. So, historically, origin stories have been pretty hit or miss. But another thing that I've heard that people don't like about it, you know, this is from males and females have said this. It like it, it felt weird, because Captain Marvel felt like, like they were trying to make a statement that, like, women could be strong, too. But they say that kind of took away from the already present female Avengers, if that makes sense. Yeah. Well, I mean, her whole thing is that she's supposed to be the OP character. So, I don't think they really have to prove that she's strong when she's supposed to be like, I can do anything I want. I mean, yeah. the majority of complaints I heard is like, it fits awkwardly into the MCU. Yeah, that's that's another thing that I heard as well. Like... It, like there, sh I'm not gonna spoil anything because, no, I haven't seen it, but I've read a decent bit. Like it just kind of like shakes up what we already thought we knew for I don't want to say no apparent reason, but it just felt like someone like took Captain Marvel and like jammed it into the hole that it might have fit in if you took some time to mold it right. Yeah, it was like um when you were a kid and you had the shapes and. You couldn't put the square through the circle, but you could kind of fit the triangle through the circle, and it worked out like that. That's kind yeah. of how it felt. I've also heard that the pacing's just weird, and then some of the mm -hmm. Also, I heard that, like, there's a cat in it that goes the whole time, but it's a CGI cat, and I'm thinking, like, just get a real fucking cat. Maybe. Have you, have you ever seen a trained cat in a movie? I don't know if that's... I have, actually. I don't remember what really? movie, but I've seen, I've seen a couple where they're, like, just train cats it's kind of impressive i wish i had a trained cat yeah <laughs> yeah honestly <laughs> well I, I trained in a poop in the litter box so i guess that's all i can be thankful for uh, mine came uh pre-trained on that <laughs> we like to see that but um i was saying brie larson was she's got marvel but i guess she would show up at a couple of movie theaters and she would work like the concession concession stands yeah, I saw some of those pictures on Twitter. That's really cool. Yeah, I think that's a cute thing to do. Yeah, and she was, like, super casual about it as well. Like, she was just happy to be there, which is weird because oh, she's caught a lot of flack, I guess, for some of the statements she's been saying recently. Yeah, how she didn't want white males to see it on release day. But the majority of that statement was, like, directed towards movie critics, which yeah, um, kind of hard to deny that. Well, it's it's more like like yeah, you can think it, but you probably just shouldn't have said it anyways. Yeah, it's just kind of like I guess controversial, but it's not. Well, it's like even if you had good intentions, would say it when like you get you know what I mean. Like even if you had good intentions when she said it, like no matter how you said it, it's still gonna sound bad. Yeah, at least to me. No, uh, I mean it's like the same way of calling out, just calling out a race in a gender it's not normally gonna end well no matter what it is yeah it, it just kind of it, it sucked that she caught so much flack for it like in general because people are gonna go into the movie with that opinion they're gonna you know hate on the movie just because of that small thing you know yeah but i mean if you let that little of a comment get to you that much to where it clouds your whole judgment on a movie eh, that's your fault at the same time I feel like if you're trying to make a good movie in general, like you should probably stay away from just saying that kind of crap in general. Yeah. No, that's because true. people are gonna walk into a movie with their, you know, implicit bias, and you're not gonna help, you know, people understand your case when you say that kind of shit. Yeah, I agree. I mean, I'm on, I'm on board with her. I don't like white males. Yeah. But um, question for you though. Hit me. So, since this it was an origin film, yeah, 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 and it does it takes place uh, for people that don't know this might be a, no, it's not really a spoiler because you can see it from the trailer. It takes place you know before current events like at all like 
We're talking back in time like the Captain America jazz. Uh, it's supposed to be like 90s. Yeah, you know, so you get to see young Samuel L. Jackson. This kind of opens up, like, the rest of the MCU, right? Like, as a whole, because they're adding, you know, they're they're showing that they're not opposed to a- adding a bunch of other characters, right? Mm-hmm. How would you feel if they kind of just rehash the format of Avengers, but with new characters? Uh, I so guess like you know, I, I guess it would take getting used to. See, that's kind of where I'm at. So, if they were to like take their new characters, keep releasing origin films, and then do another big film where they all get together and they fight a big baddie, like I would definitely be okay with that in theory. But at the same time. I, w- I wonder if I would get tired of it. I I think I would definitely get tired of it. I mean, like, comic-wise, that's what actually happens. Mm-hmm. Is, like, they kind of just move away with current heroes, and they just recycle... Not recycle, but they introduce new ones. Mm-hmm. And no one reads comics anymore. <laughs> but they haven't... They, they've been following the format of comics, but they haven't, like, directly done it, so they just kind of put mm-hmm. the twist on it. I just... Like, cause what it's leaning towards is like the Avengers we have now, where it's like, all right, move to the side. Captain Marvel's leaving the way now, and I'm like, yeah, I would give the movies a try, but I think it would throw me off too much to not see like the characters that I've watched so many movies of be in it. Well, exactly. That's kind of that's, that's. I feel like that's where I was at with it when I was thinking about it. Like, would it? Would it feel like tired? Would it feel the same? Cause I'm thinking like. It, the only reason why I'm still, like, into the, like, MC... I'm saying like a lot. The MCU is because, the you know, the movies that I watched as I was growing up, you know? Yeah. I don't know if I would find enjoyment in them, because if you just boil it down, it's just like, origin story, the character does X, so, X Y, and Z, something happens to them, fight Big Baddie, move on to the next origin story, they get to get... Like, I don't know if, like, how much longevity that would have for me as someone that's been watching them as they've come came out since they started with iron man you know yeah no i agree i mean yeah if you want like the marvel uh what's the word like blueprint it's literally just um character has something going for him now has something going for him better uh oh oh something happened and then oh there's a bad guy oh the bad guy is literally just it's it's him but it's the bad version of him yeah that's and then true. he's got a it's i guess it's supposed to represent overcoming your demons i guess question mark and mm-hmm. then you just keep it coming like a iron iron man th- fought a bigger iron man uh black <laughs> panther i was gonna say fought fought a blacker panther but no hmm. um not nah, michael b jordan's rather light-skinned he's pretty light-skinned yeah is that okay to say? Um, yeah, that's okay to say. Yeah. Uh, Captain America, he fought another person, but this dude was, had a skull. Yeah. A red skull. A red skull. Uh, <laughs> Thor fought another god. It's just you just uh, keep you just keep well, recycling it. I guess that's true, but I mean, in reality, that's kind of like the superhero genre in itself, though. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think Marvel is the only relevant superhero genre. Well, I, I was just kind of being holistic, really. No, I agree. Except, I mean, that's why, oh. like, characters like Batman are different, where you're, that's, it's kind of the same, but it's entirely, like, the exact opposite. Like, I think... Mm, yeah, that's true. Um, fucking Aquaman. Waterman fights even... Wetman Water- fights even Waterman. Man. Yeah. Wet works. <laughs> Wet, uh, wet guy that spends half his time in the water f- fights wetter guy that spends his whole time in water. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, moving on. I just... Eh, mm. I don't think I'm on board with it. I would probably give up after... Like, if we watch Endgame and they just kill off, like, Iron Man, Captain America, and, like, all that jazz, and they're just like, no, nah, we got a new wave coming. I just feel like, all right, you guys have fun. Appreciated well, the kinda, journey. Like, that's kind of where I was going with that. Like, how, how would they, like... Because if they're spending so much work bringing all the heroes together, right? Like, how do they realistically, like, kill off the other ones to where it's like, if there was another threat to Earth, why wouldn't they be able to logically come and help as well? Speaking of women, though, and Brie Larson, 
International Women's Day happens, so shout out to that. Shout out to women. Keep doing you. Shout out to women. To be honest, I didn't know that was like a like a thing. What International Women's Day? Yeah, I don't re- I don't really recall it being a thing last year. Was yeah. it? It's a thing every year. Yeah, but I don't. I felt like I saw a lot of headlines for it this year, as comparison to the years before. Really? Because like I've seen it be very prominent in the past five years, but I think it it just becomes more and more relevant with the more and more things that happen. I guess that's true. We got yeah, strong. We got sense. strong independent women standing up for their day, and you know what? Shout out to them. Shout out to them. And that's it. <laughs> and that, but uh, and that's, and that's it. Um, though you... in a different in different news, actually, there's something I wanted to bring up. Mm-hmm. So the Bill and Melinda Gates uh, foundation. I'm not sure if it's the foundation or just them as individuals. They sue a company that has granted 30 million dollars to develop a pneumonia vaccine for children. But instead, use that money to pay off its back rent and other debts it racked up. Interesting. So, we were talking about the scum of the earth in the beginning of the beginning of the episode. But this honestly kind of sickens me. It it's um it's like Robin Hood. You take from the rich and you give to the poor. But instead, they they took from everybody and then promised to do something, or not even promised, like. They just did. They just took thirty million dollars. <laughs> Literally, yeah, just took thirty, 30 million dollars. <laughs> yeah, people. I mean, well, that's that's life. People are fucked. Well, okay. So I, the actual situation. This comes from an article in the Daily Mail. Uh, the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation gave um, this company called, I think, like Nuvax. It's like P N U V A X Incorporated. Mm-hmm. They get it's a Canadian company. And they gave them. Um, just shy of thirty million dollars in grant funds in two thousand seventeen. The company then went, or the point was, is they were going to develop a um, a low cost vaccine to be distributed in uh, developing countries to counteract pneumonia, but they mismanaged their funds, which is why Bill and Melinda Gates are suing them, and it's it alleges, as the article says, that they used the money to pay you know off their past debts and whatnot i don't know how you can think like taking 30 million dollars from the one of the richest men to ever live and just like oh there's no way he'll miss this there's no way when i don't come up with a vaccine he'll uh he'll just forget about the 30 mil well the bill and melinda gates foundation is probably the biggest um charity organization? I don't know really what they consider themselves as. The article calls them a philanthropic foundation, they call oh, them. Okay. That word was actually a struggle to read, like, to say it because every time I read it, I just kept saying philanthropist in my head. Oh, okay. For some reason. I know, I, I feel Any, that. But yeah, like you said, like, why, why would they think they would get away with it? People think they're too smart for their own good, is I think what it comes down to. And also the and fact they that... they were Canadian. How dare they? Oh, not one of my brothers. Yeah, those clearly aren't true blood Canadians. Those aren't real Canucks. Those aren't real at all. But but actually, in the same vein... Oh, sorry, did you have something else you want to say on it? Uh, well, I was just going to say, I don't know why you'd like... Especially for, like, children. Like, you're creating, like, a vaccine for children, and then you're just like, eh, fuck it. I got bills to pay, or that I've messed up well, on. Like, that's the thing. That pretty much nukes your company. Oh, 100%. Basically, when this gets out, like, you're done zone. You you basically said, yeah, we'll help these children. Give us the money and we'll help these children. And you basically just said, fuck... Uh, I don't want to... I was about to say, fuck the kids. Um, <laughs> Fuck the kids! <laughs> uh, F off to those kids because we have debts that we're going to use this money to pay. Or yeah. use this money to pay for. You know... So, it's... It, what? Do you, why? Just how dumb could you be? I like how the theme of this episode has literally just been, hey, don't do stupid shit behind closed door because people will find out. <laughs> yeah, not really. that smart. Man, uh, I, I, hope, I hope Bill and Melinda Gates, their lawsuit goes in favor of them, and hopefully they can then use those funds that they are seeking, or all that they get back to then give it to a different company and hope to develop it. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. In that same vein, actually, Italy bans all unvaccinated children from attending school. I like that a lot. I think that should be uh, 
more prominent uh, everywhere. Mm, this comes from a BBC News article. And yeah, Italian children have been told not to turn up to school unless they can prove they have been properly vaccinated, as the article states. Yeah. I mean, it's and, basically as simple as that. Yeah, uh, parents risk being, uh, according to the article, the parents risk being fined as well if they don't go up to uh, 500 euros, which is like $560, I mm -hmm. guess. Yeah, for us. Um, maybe God can well, pay for the fine. <laughs> um, but in the reality of it, though, is like kids under six can be turned away from attending school if they're not vaccinated. But if you're between six and sixteen, they can't be attending school. But that's where the fine is; they'll be receiving a fine. Oh, okay. But I mean, it, it's I I'm I'm very happy that you know other countries besides the U.S. are. And, you know, other, I guess, North American countries are taking efforts to stop these, Heathens. this anti-vax movement that is coming about. Uh, it's probably one of the dumbest movements that's probably come to light in the past uh, 10 years. Oh, maybe well, like it's definitely the most nonsensical. Yeah, it doesn't make any sense. At all, actually. And I'm glad this is in Europe specifically, because Europe has more uh, cases of measles. Like, measles cases have apparently tripled in Europe. Nice. Bring it back. And on a side note as well, on, like, the whole anti-vax thing, YouTube also takes ads off of all anti-vax videos, which is fucking great. Hmm. So good on the Italian government. No vaccine, no school, as uh, Grillo was quoted to say. I'm all right with that. I'm down to clown mm. with that. Let's make that a, a worldwide thing. Mm-hmm. Again, the the reasoning behind parents not immunizing their children is so dumb. Yeah. Yeah, none of them have, like, any, like, actual logical reasons except for, like, my son doesn't need medicine, it takes him further away from God, or my three years of shaman classes that I took online should help me prevent my child from ever getting sick. What's that, little Timmy? You got pneumonia, or you got measles? You got the black plague? Just yeah. take these, uh, take these essential oils and rub them under your tongue yeah. and slide them down the small of your back, and you should be good. All right, Timmy. I know this yellow yellow fever is killing you inside and out, but if you just rub these healing crystals on you for four hours of the day, you'll be fine in no time. Yeah. Right. Wait, Timmy. You died of smallpox. Your parents didn't pray hard enough. They must not have loved you. Timmy, what's that? A meteor killed you from outer space just like the dinosaurs? You should have put up your reflect crystal to block the Your meteor. reflect crystal. <laughs> you should have put up your reflect crystal to block the meteor. Jeez. God. All right. I'm done with that. Enough I'm topics. That. We're I'm evolving as that. a podcast right here, Bobby. We're going to we're starting to introduce segments. Hit me with a hit me with one of your new segments, Daniel. I know you've been itching to get those out because they are absolutely bangerang. Thank you. I appreciate that adjective as well. Um, well, here at here at the frying pan, we figured we we want to have a little more fun. I'm sorry. I just the idea popped into my head in one of my essays to use the word bangerang, and I'm just wondering what would be said about it as an adjective. And your professor's just like, oh yeah. All right, if, if you it drew works. like a little like a comet line and wrote bass clap, I, cr I shit you not, oh I would, I would, God. I, cry. Uh, I would take over the world. I would take over the world. <laughs> that would sick. That would that would set it off. But yeah. um, we want to do some segments, uh, some fun little games, keep it you know alive, help you guys interact a little bit. Um, sure thing. First one I had in mind is um, I've been listening to some really bad songs lately, with just okay. like awful lyrics. But I always think it's funny, so I was saying to myself. Why not play, just get, I'll give you like a uh, one little bar, one little verse, one little line, mm -hmm. and you got to tell me who it's by. I'll give you three options or you mm -hmm. tell me there's no way that's from a song. Okay. All right. Uh, let me know when you're ready. Yeah. Hit me with it. All right. Um, my, the first lyric is, um, I'm the type to have a bulletproof condom and still got to pull out 
but that's just me and i ain't perfect oh boy let me do do i need to repeat myself or you got that hit me with it one more time okay i am the type to have a bulletproof condom mm -hmm. and still gotta pull out but that's just me i ain't perfect now do you think this was a kanye west b Shaq west c big sean or d none of the above Who do you think has a bulletproof condom, Bobby? Can I can I hear my options again? Um, Kanye West. Okay. Shaq West. Big Sean. Uh huh. Or none of them. Okay, so I want to say, like, when you say none of them, does that mean it's a made-up lyric, or is that just yeah, the, that it's the I just made it up. Listed? No, that's okay. just I made it up. That sounds like a very Kanye thing to say. Is Kanye, I'm gonna be real with you. Is Kanye the final answer? I don't really know who Big Sean is. Big Big Sean. Big, Big Sean. Sean is. And you know, I only you you've only just discovered that Chuck West has got other songs. So no, no, I knew. I'm gonna lock in as a Kanye. <sighs> no, it brother. Sean. It was it was Big Sean. <laughs> Big Sean and all me. Featuring Drake. Uh, oh, okay, okay. Jeez, that's a. Can I hear that lyric one more time? Um, I got a bulletproof condom. Sorry, hold on. Oh yeah, I'm the type to have a bulletproof condom, and I still got to pull out. And that's just me, and I ain't perfect. Huh. Lyrical genius from Big yeah. Sean. I couldn't even tell you what this uh, that that would mean. All right, um, I'm gonna give you a second one. We're gonna do two today, just okay. to just yeah. to little dip your toes in. Um, this one is uh -huh. driving so fast, about to piss myself, and it repeats that four times. Uh oh, sorry, six times. Uh, driving so fast about a piss on myself repeats it six times um S six times six times six times in a row consecutively back to back uh -huh. to back to back to back to back uh -huh. um we got Katy Perry uh Miley Cyrus Cardi B or no one um, what are you feeling what, who, who seems who seems like they'd piss themselves um, oh God. You know, I'm gonna I'm gonna go on a limb and say it's not Katy Perry, just because every ounce of my being hopes it's not Katy Perry. <laughs> that's that's fair. That's an accurate assumption. <laughs> um, Cardi B. Um, the uh, probably not her. Uh, and then Miley Cyrus. It could have been when Miley Cyrus was going through that weird phase, if anything. Could have. I feel like I would have heard that. But at the same time, I really want to say that you wouldn't go through the effort to, re say, repeat it four times or six times, whatever, if you made that one up. So, mm, Miley Cyrus? Oh, good Can job, Bobby. It? Yeah, good job. Fuck yeah. Wait, that. that's an actual Miley Cyrus. Yep, it is. the song what is song? called Four Times Four, or Four by Four. And it's just driving so fast about to piss on myself. Driving so fast about to piss on myself. Driving so fast about to piss on myself. This. I actually have to. What's it called again? Uh, four, four times four. Four times four. Miley Cyrus. All right, I'm running that down. All right. All right. So, and, folks. And that's that's basically uh that's the gist of the game. If people want, people like it, then just let us know. Yeah, leave a leave a comment down below. Uh, if you enjoy it. It's yep. uh, it's a, it's a game. It's a yeah. game. We got we got a we got a lot more ideas, but we're just running a mm -hmm. few by. Of course, of course, of course. Did you have any? Or did you have um, yours? Well, okay. So I also had kind of an idea for a new thing. So basically, the general idea is it's like two truths and a lie, right? So I'm gonna give you two true statements and one false, but you're gonna guess 
I'm not going to let you know until next episode, the beginning of next episode, if you were right. Okay. All right. All right. All right. So here we go. We, we're going to start off this. Wait. If um, you... Sorry. Mm -hmm. Is it just like general? Or there, is there? Is it just like general two truths and a lie? Or is it like a certain topic? Uh, these facts can encompass anything. And basically what I'm doing is I'm trying to make the false ones sound as true as possible. And I'm trying to make the true ones sound as false as possible. Okay. I just didn't so know keep that in your head because it makes it harder. Understandable. I'm ready. I'm ready, Freddy. All right. If you knock your tooth out and put it back in the socket, it will grow roots back and save the tooth. Oh, huh. that's the first one. Okay. The second is having six fingers is actually a dominant trait, but the genes for it are so incredibly rare that pretty much no one has it. Okay. <laughs> and the last one was bubbles actually have a seam. A seam? Yeah. Like a baseball seam? Like a like a seam, yeah. Huh. Not like. Now, I'm not meaning like a like a tie, obviously, but there is like a C, meaning there is a way to split them, so, so to speak. If you were, uh, I guess, realistically, it would pop, but they do have a seam. Okay. All right, I'll give you credit. All three of those viable for all for a truth or a lie. Um, well, only one of them lies in the lie. Which? What, what do you think, friend? I am going to say, um, the second one, which is having the, six the fingers, fingers is actually a dominant trait. The sauce all right. fingers. All right, folks, that's the answer. And hey, if, if you want to feel interactive, you can put your answer down below as well. But you won't be figuring out which one's the lie until next episode. And be good people. Don't Google it. It ruins the fun for me. Mm. So, folks, that is the final segment for the day. I'm going to take us home, if that's all right with you, Dan, unless you got anything else you'd like to say. It's all right with me, baby cakes. All right, so, like I said, the beginning of next episode, I'll, uh, we'll uh, you know, circle back to it, and we'll say you know which one was the actual lie in the statements. Already right? Already right. Already right. So, folks, this has been the Frying Pan Podcast episode 19 we're almost at 20 can you believe it we've actually been doing this for almost 20 weeks so far i can believe it i can believe it as well because it's fun for us and like always we do this to get better so any form of criticism would be appreciated and we are on social media as you guys already know i've said it before we're on twitter and instagram the handle for both of those is the frying pan pod we're posting on those actually more frequently so we'd appreciate a follow over on there give us some love We'd appreciate it. And if you're listening to us now, which you would have to be because you're hearing my voice say it, that means you're on one of the, th the uh, audio platforms, such as Podbean, Spotify, Apple, or Stitcher, or even YouTube. If you're on all, any one of those, thanks for giving us a listen, and we'd appreciate it if you would give us a like, a star rating, a comment, something like that. It helps us out. And circling back to the constructive criticism, you can do that in the comments, or you can send that over to the email in the pan podcast at gmail.com. Because, like I said, we do this to get better, and any form of criticism helps. And for the last time, this has been the Frying Pan Podcast, episode 19. If you're listening to this on Thursday as it comes out, hey, thanks for being up to date. And if not, thanks for coming back and listening. Either know. It's not the day it uploads. We appreciate it. I have been Robert D'Onofrio. It's me. Robert D'Onofrio. It's, gotcha. it's him. Gotcha. Robert D'Onofrio. And this has been the Frying Pan Podcast. Thanks again, folks, for listening. Stay tuned for the next episode to figure out the answer to that little segment back there. Have a good one. Bye.